What you gon' do with it? 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 What you gon' do? I'm swinging with it. Pop that coat. Now let me see your coat. I'm swinging with it. Pop that. Now let me see your coat. I'm swinging with it. Let me see you go. I'm swinging with it. Pop it. Now let me see you go. Go, go. Go, go. Go, go. Go, go. Go, go. Go, go. 
Cybernet sees we may not make it out of the bay. Just unwind, it doesn't matter anyway. Try not to freeze or throw away the keys. The predator is now the prey. Things could be different. Things could be alright. Things could be innocent when dark becomes light. We're Screen, the rebels in 4K. We're 
And welcome on in, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome on in to Apollo Racing Club here this evening for ACF1 as we head to one of my favorite circus uh, circuits, Pinwheel. I'm Adam EV500. Joining me in the booth, as always, my compatriot and a friend across the pond, James Williamson. James, it's going to be an interesting race tonight in this 5.6 kilometer long circuit. It certainly is as we enter the realm of fantasy here tonight, Adam. Um, and we'll see just who can come out on top in, the, in this five, like I said, five five point six kilometer, five point six mile circuit. Very fast. Very much a test for our drivers tonight. The biggest part about tonight is how close Cody Lawrence is getting to the championship. There is no situation for him tonight that he can walk away, and that even includes Mark Levine DNFing tonight, but he still leads the championship with 191 points. Mark Levine in second with 142. Sim Black Fox, Mr. Consistent, with 108 points in third place. Damian Hall in fourth place for, with 91 points, so that battle for third place is starting to heat up a little bit. In, fourth, in fifth place, Mark Anthony Hinkson. Uh, with 80 points, legs with 60 points, a 20 point difference between those two. William Neron in seventh place with 56 points. Matt Chevry in eighth place for 40 with 45 points. Ninth place, um, we got Figo. No, that's not him. Yeah, it is. It's Figo. Uh, 12 points, and then William Knowles in that 10th spot with. 11 points so it's all start we're heading down into the home stretch here james and it all seems like all eyes are on cody right now all he has to do is just continue to drive what what he's doing into next week and he can be a champion yep definitely all eyes are def i've been on cody all season so can he continue with his great form tonight and uh, get himself what one more hand on that trophy and uh, the request is like, so Mark, can Mark Levine close the gap? He had a good chance last week, but unfortunately got caught up in an incident. And you can't afford any of that at this stage. You just really need to try and get as many wins as possible and hope Cody makes a mistake. But so far, Cody's been pretty, pretty faultless this season. I must preface a saying this based on the fact that the drop weeks in the point standings have not been put in. Um, so each driver gets two drop weeks. What that means is that their lowest scores get dropped from their, their race point total. So that is obviously something that will come into effect at the end of the season. We have 28 laps to do tonight, but first we have a 14 minute qualifying session here, which will get underway in just a moment. And of course, Drivers like Cody Lawrence was the quickest in practice with a 125.8 and, excuse me, a 125.3. Mark Levine, a 125.8. And for some reason, and I've disconnected. Awesome. Love that. So we'll have to take a pause on the qualifying. Seems to happen every other week. One week it's fine, the next week not so much. So, 
It's what we get when we work with servers. It sure is. So we'll get back into it in here in just a moment. So we'll load back in. Well, it's probably the best time. To, sorry, it's the best time it's happened because literally no one's on our lap yet. So <laughs> 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 we'll get back in. Now race gets time. Will people do their outlap before before Adam can get back into the server? Let's place your bets now. Place, yes. place your bets. Place your bets. Of course, this is a if pretty... You can, if you're allowed to gamble, place your bets. If, this is a pretty long circuit. Again, 5.6 kilometers. That's what, about miles? About three miles in length? Yes. So, like that. Something like that. I'm bad with math, but, so... I am also bad with math, so you asked literally the worst person for this question. <laughs> I, I, I can't do it in my head, but it's somewhere around that length. So that's a pretty... That's a pretty decently sized track and it's wide and the elevation changes are pretty much never ending it seems like you start at the top of the hill then you go shoot straight down and back up again it's it's one of my favorite tracks for a reason because of the different elevation changes you we will witness tonight um all right cool we're we're good we are live ladies and gentlemen so what Taylor's is going to be spending the first lap? Let's head over to him. Get us a good camera view for everything that's happening here as he goes across the bridge. And you can see that elevation change. Just a slight downhill banked corner going through oh, there. It's, it's such a roller coaster, this track. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. I love this track. I wish this track actually existed. So. <laughs> But it Me does too. Not. And this is the final turn, ladies and gentlemen, as Mark Taylor is coming down that uh, front straight as Mark Anthony Hinkson puts up the second quickest uh, sector here, or the quickest. Uh, now Cody Lawrence has a purple uh, Cody sector. La yeah, Cody Lawrence is uh, starting a very good good opener, but Mark Taylor, I was going to say, that's a 128, but instantly Mark Anthony Hinkson, 126. See Andy, next over the line. Andy Cody going to be the next one uh, over the line with Backmarker. And this is really helping Backmarker getting that slipstream down this incredibly long straight. Backmarker crosses the line, goes second quick at 126.9. Andy Cody, fifth quick. Jansen crosses the line at 127.8. William Neron, a 127.666. Tom Cruise, a 126.684. And Angela going to be crossing the line now with a 128 point, uh, where'd she go? A 128 point, or 120, the 130.251. I thought I saw a 28. So Mark Levine has coming out of the pit lane now. Let's head over to Sin Black Fox. He's somebody who can ha have a good performance here tonight. He's again, this is one of his favorite tracks as Fox goes six quick with a 126.960. Alaric, third quickest so far with a 126.612. Now, James, you were the only person that said this driver's name correctly last week, so tell me how to pronounce this name. What, Raquel, Raquelis Figo? Raquelis Figo. Apparently That's I probably was, wrong, but you, you, you well, said yeah. it right, right last week. Allegedly, yeah. Allegedly. So was, <laughs> I'll take it. It's a small little trophy win for me. Let's take a look Cody here. Lawrence. Co Cody Lawrence as he is putting up a hot lap now. So we'll go to his onboard here so we can show you the elevation changes of this track. And here we go down the hill, and you're going to shoot right back up the hill, go down again, and then you're back up. It is in straight up roller coaster of a track. This track is magnificent. It really is as we're uh, heading under the bridge. Cody Lawrence trying to get a lap on the board. I don't know what happened with his first time. It was two purple sectors and they never he didn't finish the lap, so he's open for something. Although I guess for us it would be much better if he did start at the back. Cody Lawrence right now has a green sector one. Mark Anthony Hinkson a purple sector one. So 
Just to kind of update you on Mark Anthony Hinkson, keeping an eye on Cody Lawrence here as we now hit the second sector of the lap, end of the second sector. Oh, He's down in so sector tough. one. And a little bit of, I don't, I don't know if that was my end or his end. Looks like the ping is fine, but now he's coming into the final corner. Makes it through nice and neat. Gets back on the gas, and the DRS comes quite early on the straight. So be on the lookout for that. The DRS should be open by this point, and he's coming down, coming down, and he'll cross the line. He does go on pole a 125.847. Heads out over to Mark Anthony Hinkson. He goes second quick a 126.093. What has happened in his lap? He has... The quickest sector one, but the but had a slower sector three. He certainly did, but at least at least he sort of kept tabs because when Cody Lawrence crossed the line, he had nearly a second on the field. But we're still waiting for um, Mark Levine to set a real lap. Back I marker I going. First lap. Back marker third quickest right now, one twenty six point two two two. Figo right now, a one twenty six point. Five six two. He's just. Mark Levine, he, sorry, he's gone purple sector two. Sorry to cut you off there. Send over to Mark Levine wherever he may be. Oh, there he is. Has not put up a lap yet, so he'll get back on the power through that final corner. And hopefully, here soon we can actually show you the current gaps as more drivers cross the line. And Mark Levine will cross the start finish line with a 125.877 going second quick so close as well it's just three three tenths three tenths or three hundreds three, three one hundred <laughs> yeah i always got that wrong i'm bad with mass adam including the entire time timing <laughs> decimals well, he's close. That's the main thing. Cody Lawrence might be wide. The whole season's been been very close by margins, but it's just Cody Lawrence has come out on top more often than not. William Neron, though, is on a lap at the moment, making his way through sector two, and into the final straight now. So we'll see what tiny time he can put on. He's got 126.8 on the board so far. Is this going to be an improvement? Certainly places up for grabs for most of the field here with a good lap. Crosses the line, and he does not improve position. No. He had two, two green sectors, but that first sector really did him in that lap. So we'll see if he can uh, get out again and, and get one more lap in. I think most people will at least do one more run after this. Well, looking at Cody Lawrence, he has improved in sector one. We'll see if he can improve his time in sector two. He does have the third, the sec, the fastest sector three, and he's slowing down. This is Mark Levine. Thank you. They're both running Red Bull r liveries. They are. I agree. I, I, I just noticed. Sorry. <laughs> um. Well, Cody Lawrence, a quick, quick sector two now, a thirty-one point one five eight through sector two. So that's a purple. And he'll get on the gas, get that DRS wide open. The DRS should be open about this point, so he'll have a little extra help, and he'll cross the line, and he goes even quicker, a 125.598. Yeah, good lap. We, you'll still look at that final sector where he actually lost a bit of time. So, again, if he wants to go out again, he might be able to find a bit more time, and he might need to because Mark Levine will probably be on a lap now. If I probably is working through sector one. Yep, he is. Let's yeah. keep an eye on him as we have four minutes to go in this 14-minute qualifying session before we hit 28 laps. And this is I'll take you back just a couple of seasons ago at this race. Decora took pole position, and his the controller disconnected, and he wasn't able to get off the start line, causing a huge pileup at the start of this one. So... Anything can happen in this one. It seems like this one, this one race, can change anything in a championship. It certainly could. So what we say we should uh, disconnect Cody's wheel at the race start, and then get the popcorn. Mark Levine goes around, and that's the end of that lap. 
So he'll go back to pits, get a new set of tires, and he'll have to get out there quickly. Yeah, he's lucky he's got three minutes, so he should be able to get off another run in if he wants to try. Now we say this track is long, but the lap times are semi-quick, about about average an F1, an average F1 track uh, race time that in the one twenties. But that's because pretty much this entire track, you're pretty much on the loud pedal. Yeah, it certainly feels like a track where you, you don't lift very often. Alaric coming to start a lap now. He's in P6. Can he make a bit of an improvement? Try and get past back marker, maybe for you go. Oh hell, maybe even Cody Lawrence, you know. Wow, that, that band always... Uh, <laughs> it's just crazy. Just crazy, and wait until you, you see a camera shot late during the race where there's a camera. The, the, the developer of this track, they put a stationary camera at the top of that hill. It looks, it oh, looks, nice. it looks absolutely cool. So I, I, I absolutely, I love this race, love this track. Yeah, you, what I said to you before we started is, is whoever put, whoever did this track put a lot of work in it. Oh, they did. And if you actually notice the details, you'll see roller coasters and, you know, you can see the wind farms, the windmill farms all over the place. And whoever put this track together, props to you. This is this is one heck of a great fancy track. You can see the roller coaster on the right hand side there from legs. And you'll actually and it there it is operational. So people will get, you know great yeah, this great line people <laughs> <laughs> got the fancy roller coaster let's go over to mark levine who's on a hot lap can he beat cody lawrence tonight in qualifying he's only bested him twice in qualifying i hey, want to make it thrice tonight i'll see what he can do locks up a bit there which is probably not going to help him Levine just trying to keep this car on the track does not want to get in that gravel trap at all there's the roller coaster as we now go over the bridge and we go downhill again a nice little bank right hander going downhill allows you to get some extra speed using gravity now we are approaching the end of the lap here but this is where it gets tricky because you have a hard braking zone coming up here that's a chicane a really tight chicane Nicely done there. He has two green sectors, so he is improving. Can he find the time in this final straight? And that's going to be the key. Does he get a good run off that final corner? Because the, really the third sector is the straight. So DRS wide open, and he crosses the line. He improves the time, but does not improve position of 125.635. Yep. Still three one hundredths. No close between Cody and Mark, so... Room for a good race between those two, hopefully. Well, checkered flag, oh. checkered flag, and Cody Lawrence on his way to another pole position on the season. And unfortunately, we don't have an award for that, but he is going to be the man to beat again tonight with that 125.598. Let's head over to back marker now. Back marker down in sector one. Looking to improve in sector two. He's, you know, he's only a tenth, less than a tenth, off of Figo's pace for almost five one hundredths of a second. It's just endlessly throwing the car into these corners. It's going to be a crazy race. Oh, of, and he and, uh, spins it. Yep. It's about, the rear tires are just not happy with that uh, traction zone. Alark crossing Alark. the line. Does not improve, and he was the final that, qualifier. That's it. That's the ball game. Well, there's the man on pole tonight, and Cody Lawrence once again proving his dominance here. 
at ACF1. So this should be an interesting race. Again, most of the field not separated by a full second in the top five. Gets yep. it's a it's I'd imagine, I'd imagine, close. Yeah, it is very close. I imagine it's it's hard to get away as well just due to the nature of the circuit. I see the draft keeps the, the front will be maybe kept close together through that. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go to the running order tonight. Cody Lawrence on the pole in second place. Mark Levine, Mark Anthony Hinkson in third place. Raquelis Figo in fourth place. Back marker in fifth. We've got Alaric in sixth, uh, followed by uh, Legs, Lagara Smith in seventh. And number eight, in the eighth position is Tom Cruise, who may or may not still be the real one. We've never actually decided that. And ninth place, William Neron. And tenth is Marco Jansen. 11th place, Kieran Fox, his lowest starting position of the season. Robert Walker in 12th and 13th. Matt Chevry in 14th. Mark Taylor and rounding out the top 15, Francisco Vasquez. And our final two starters tonight in 16th place is going to be Angela. And bringing up the rear in 17th is Andy Cody. Tyler Sines and Allard Van. Uh, he's not even hitting... Uh, a Allard van de Hoven disconnecting before the, this race even begins. So, we have our running order tonight. It's time to go racing here. We will have just a moment here before cars are allowed to go on the grid. Looks like I think this is going to be fine. It is going to be fine. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Also, a co couple seasons ago, I was kicked from the session because of a, a weird bug. So, who knows what's going to happen tonight? Were you racing too hard, Adam? No, I wasn't even racing. I was, I, was I was technically signed you, in as the safety car. With the, with the, so it must have been the unsafety car that night. <laughs> Very true. Oh, oh, oh. 15 seconds here into lights out, and away we go. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is time to go 28 laps around. Pinwheel, three, four, five, six lights on, and six lights will go out, and away we go. Cody Lawrence getting a good start there, but Angela's going to pick up a drive through penalty for. A jump start. Oh, we have massive, massive carnage oh, in the back. And everybody does keep it going. So we do some mud rejoins there. Oh, and the leaders crash. And the leaders have crashed into each other and they're off the track. We that's, have... that's kind of what we needed because we needed Cody to have a mistake. But what we didn't need is Martin Fight to be involved in that mistake. All oh, right. my word, there's more carnage. More carnage, we are gonna deploy the full course yellow. For that one. Yeah. I don't blame you. Get everybody lined back up as Fox and several drivers going off. Backmarker is in the lead, but Fox, Cody Lawrence, Le Mark Levine, Tom Cruise, Mark Anthony Hinkson has gone down to the back. So what this full course yellow is, is basically we do one lap under yellow, get everybody grouped back up. They have to maintain a delta uh, throughout this, and 100 with 160 miles per hour. Legs was involved in something. Angela, um, several several drivers involved in several different incidences. So it was yeah, only there, right. A lot, a lot to unpack on that opening lap. I believe anyone from tenth. 10th on back was involved in an incident on that first lap. But Cody Lawrence, P15, after starting on the pole, colliding with his teammate. Not what we've seen They've been very respectful racers, and obviously it all, all came to a head tonight. But like I said, back marker lead in, which is not against his, totally against his namesake, but. <laughs> you know, maybe it's ironic. Change into a front runner. <laughs> and here we I'm go. Like, this Full course yellow should be ending. 
No, it is not. Yeah. That's so, fun. I think I may have to end the full course yellow. But Backmarker has quite a significant lead, so he needs to slow it down. All right, here we go. Everybody's lined up, and I actually know we're not. We have drivers in the pit, so we will wait for them. Uh, Larrick and Mark Levine have taken this opportunity to pit. This has this been an incident under the safety car here. Yeah, I'm seeing Mark Taylor, Tom Cruise has been involved in something. But What's it does on? does not matter. Adam, did you give him all the crazy juice before the race? I did not. Well, they got it somehow because there's only two laps in and everyone's uh, acting crazy. Bringing out the full pinwheel experience. <laughs> And one driver is already disconnected, so. We will be going green this time when they come through. You assume. Well, I think I, I do have control of this, so. No one's ever fully in control, Adam, you should know that. We do have a driver coming out of the pits, but they will have to really start pushing here oh it's uh that Tyler signs well the signs is is re signing to the session he's a lot down so he's out there racing and to be honest with how crazy this race has gone so maybe you actually watch the first lap he's like oh, I'm gonna get into this because points are definitely still on offer even a lap down there we go full course yellow is ending Jeez, that was a a beep People still crashing into the safety car. And here we go. We morning. are back to green. And Jansen's going to get over, get have a battle here with Robert Walker. We're three wide in the back here in the mid pack of this. In the front, we still got drivers going all over the place. <laughs> I don't even know what Matt Chevry was doing. He was trying to split the dice, but does not get it done into turn one. And we still well, have... I think we had another incident. Do we have another one? Nope. one? I believe so. Nope. No, we don't. We're good. We are good. Uh, I'm just going to keep saying we are because... The first lap just absolutely traumatized me. <laughs> and look at this side by side up and down and up the hill. And that marker's is... crashed. Back marker's crashed? Yeah, he, he crashed on his own. He is off. And oh, no. <laughs> and now he's back, back, where, back where he belongs at the back. <laughs> well, very quickly bet... here, we've had you... three race leaders. Yeah, no one wants to lead the race. That's the problem. Everyone just wants to crash. We've got more crashing going on. Mark Anthony Hinkson and Backmarker, and Backmarker is going to call it a night. Uh, that's unfortunate. That's two DNFs. Taylor Sides is getting close to that point. A lot down. Oh, we got two more off. We have oh, no. Shelby and, and somebody else. Oh, no. That's going to put legs up in the fourth. I think, I think that was. Um, uh, Francisco Vasquez, I think. Yeah, that was Vasquez and what Matt Chevry involved in that. And we have another car off coming off <laughs> the third to last turn. What is happening? Oh, uh, my. That's Adam, what did you do to these people? I did not do anything, but that's a Laric who spun there. And I guess Marco Jansen is leading. Apparently. For how long, though? For how long? <laughs> For how long? <laughs> can he survive the say, mountain? It is literally, it is literally a, a death race, survival race now. It's and no one wants to lead. And no one who leads gets murdered by the track. It's only a matter of time, I think, for Jansen, unfortunately. <laughs> you don't oh. want to be leading until that final turn. Well, we said it'd be a roller coaster, Adam, but we didn't think it would be this, this much of a roller coaster four laps in. We weren't thinking it was going to be an emo emotional roller coaster. We just thought it was going to be a crazy race with lots of overtakes. But what it has done is has flipped this race on its head. I mean, there's somebody going off. Was that was that who I think it was? I think it was Matt Chevrolet. Okay, it looked like a Red Bull car, but couldn't no, no, say it. for certain. 
And Walker has had it off somewhere as he is going very slow. He has fallen down the seventh and that puts legs into the podium. And But guess who is creeping up behind this crew? It's Cody Lawrence. He's already back up in the sixth. He is back up in the sixth and Mark Levines is only back in eighth. So these two are working their way back through the field. Well, they get to the front by the end of it. Francisco Vasquez is uh, crushing Mark Anthony Inkson. And then Vasquez is crushed again. Well, that's further back. That was there was no points on the show there, so we continue on, Adam. But it's a lot of carnage so far. It has been a lot of carnage, but you know who's been navigating this well? It's been Marco Jansen and William Neron and Legs. They are right now yep. Legs being chased down by Mark Taylor along with Fox and Cody Lawrence. And right now it's just this is kind of the only battle we see out on track. But this is the track. It's gonna be much easier to overtake than uh, Hockenheim last week as Raquelis Figo goes 129.8 puts the fastest lap time of the race and Angela will DNF for a second week in a row yeah she is. picked up a penalty on the start I don't know what happened after that but yeah science is now up into 15th place he needs five more and he's uh, got that point I think you mentioned, um, obviously, Johnson and Niren have, have navigated the early chaos well, but like you said, Mr. Consistency, uh, Mr. Kieran Fox up in P5, and again, it's very solid outing in the race. So, as I said, the lowest starting position of the year in qualifying, but I guess with that, how many cars are flying off, it didn't really matter in the long run. By lap four, he was already uh, in the top five. We seem to be settling down a bit now, Adam. <laughs> Seems like things are settling down, but don't hold your breath because anything could still happen. We still got lots of cars pretty close to each other. But right now, Marco Jansen, a five second lead across the field right now, and he is going to take full advantage of this lead. Certainly needs to because once Cody Lawrence is uh, let loose, he's, he's going to be chasing him down very quickly, I'd imagine. Cody at the moment is kind of stuck in six. He's in a bit of a log jam. He is. Because guess who oh. just made a pass for seventh place? Cody uh, Mark Levine. And he is I believe closing. Oh, Fox is off. Yeah, Fox and uh, Mark Taylor looks like they crashed. They yeah. did. And that's going to promote Cody Lawrence and Mark Levine to fourth and fifth. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you love a free two for one special on the free positions there. Easy, easy money. So they uh, keep working their way into the back into the podium, back into the race lead, hopefully. That's what they'll be thinking. So now it's about, you know, it seems like nobody could settle in. And that was the pr one thing about last week. A lot of drivers were saying that they were having trouble really settling in because of how close the battles were pretty much through the entirety of the race. And I think we're going to see the same thing here as legs has an off and he is falling down the order he's now been passed down into seventh yeah i think it's really really is just approach to the track it's very high speed so things happen very quickly and you really need the reaction times if if you do end up getting a run on someone unexpectedly but we've seen a few incidents a few, a few scruffy moments so far but hopefully i say people might start to get into a bit of a rhythm get into a bit of space put some laps down and hopefully get to that pit stop and then see what they want to do. Two stops on the table tonight. Yeah, I mean, every, seems like a good portion of the field started. It looks like Cody Lawrence started on the hards. Mark Levine started on the mediums. Let's see where Marco Jansen started. I Let me see. He started on the hards as well. So a lot of drivers starting on the hardest compound, which we haven't seen too much this season just because of we are on regular racetracks that weren't incredibly long. Oh, and there goes Jansen. He is off. And here comes William Neron to take the lead of the race. There we go. It was, it was only a matter of time before the track claimed another victim. And William Neron, our latest leader. He surely must be the most leaders we've had all season. <laughs> that is our fourth, fourth different fourth leader. leader. Fourth, fourth leader of this race. Yep, and we're only seven laps in. Everyone gets a lap, Adam, and then they have to uh, pull over and let someone else have a lead. 
Everything's communism at Pinwheel. <laughs> oh. So seven laps in, we've had four different leaders, and we still have 21 laps to go here in this one, and it is getting spicy. <laughs> it, it certainly is. The Larrick and Robert Walker have come together. Our latest incident. That's not, I think, both of them out of the points. Larrick especially is down in 13th now. Cody Lawrence, due to the um, the incident, is sort of closed, closing to within three seconds of uh, Jansen and Neron. Let you know the duels theme will be starting soon for those two. Cody Lawrence is uh, going to be chasing him down very quickly, I'd imagine. Well, it's a matter of how well those tires can hold up. But Cody Lawrence does have quite a pace difference amongst the rest of the field. But can he keep it up? That's the question. Also, I wonder if he picked up any damage. Well, it doesn't look like it now. His last lap time, 130.1 for our leaders, William Neron, 131.4 and 133.7 for Marco. So that should yeah. tell you. Yeah, true, true. How foolish of me to think that Cody Lawrence would uh, be inconvenient. <laughs> My well, car damage, a bit of extra drag. Well, looking back at this battle here, Fox back up into six. Chasing down Mark Taylor once again. Yep, these two collided earlier. Gave uh, Cody Lawrence and Mark Levine free positions, but Fox now looking on the inside. He gets that move done before the corner even. And Legs is being dragged into this. Uh, Legs will be happy about this because he will take significant advantage here as Fox really pulls away there out of the first couple of corners. In, in so he's got that fifth. He's got he's got that Max Verstappen DRS going. That's what he's got. <laughs> How crazy is that? Two seconds in like two straights. Anyway, that's that's real Red Bull in in fantasy pinwheel world. Red Bull are uh, third and fourth, but also have a massive pace advantage on most of the field generally. Generally, art imitating life. <laughs> Let's put a downer on everyone, but it's you know just like we we saw seven laps to end. It's kind of facts at this point. <laughs> uh, they've obviously got Adrian Newey designing their fancy cars well clearly now Legs has fallen back just a little bit here to Marco Taylor or to Mark Taylor not Marco Marco Jansen's up in the front and now Cody Lawrence has dropped the gap to less than a second to Marco Jansen he is approaching the battle for the lead here on lap number 10 of 28. Yeah, I want to start humming the Jules theme, but I think we'll probably get DMCA'd for it. So, <laughs> just imagine it's being played right now because Cody Lawrence, he smells the blood, and he's got he's got two two drivers in mind. He wants to get this lead back after the incident on the first lap. They put him at the back with Mark Levine. Well, Mark Levine, he isn't gaining much ground at all. 5.1 seconds behind Cody Lawrence. And he's slowly closing the gap on these on these other drivers, and that's what he just has to do. He has to continue to just score good points to keep this championship going next into next week. Um, of course, there is no possible way for Cody Lawrence to claim the championship, even with a Mark Levine DNF. So that should tell you something that it's. It's not over until it's over. It certainly isn't. And you know, like I said, Cody Lance could have a mistake, have a have another incident, DNF himself. Championships definitely is still on the table for Mark Levine, but like I say, he just needs to keep getting those solid finishes. I believe um he pitted under the safety car of full course yellow. I think he's gone to a different set different tire set to everyone else. He's on what looks like the mediums. Yep, the medium tire. So, I guess that frees him up to a uh, oh. different strategy. Is uh, Marco Johnson's gone into the pits and he picks and got up five, five seconds, seconds. speed in. Oh, yeah, you know you, you, you hate to see it, but 
this is what happens. You know, these races are all about just minimizing your mistakes. A lot of other people pit in. Mark Levine is one of them. So, pit stops are starting, Adam. Lap 11. I imagine if you're pitting now, he's probably going to have to go for another stop. Uh, if you go to the hard tire, you could make it. If you go to the medium tire, obviously you won't. Um, yeah. I think a lot of people start on the hard tire, though, so they have no choice. They're going to have to use a different set. Well, the hard, the, 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 softs. well the hard tire is going to go long here, it looks like, because we're on lap 11, I would say about Probably last about five, six more laps, and then the medium tire can make it. I would say from that point, but you have to get if the medium tire is really bad, starting to really wear and not be as strong on lap 11. So you would need to get the lap 17. And oh, William Neron, not as quick through the final corner as Cody Lawrence, and he's going to get that DRS, and he's going to make a move happen now. And all William Neron can do is just watch him sail away and just try and stick with him to hold on to the DRS and stick with this leader. And this is the highest that William Neron has been all season. It's nice to see him having a pretty good race. As long as he keeps it up, he'll finish in second, I would say, by, by the end of this one. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's certainly been a great great out in front so far. Like I say, just needs to keep it clean, and he should should finish on the podium, be it second or third. Just um, try and hold on to Cody Lawrence. Like I say, get the get the DRS. His so highest he's, he's, finish to date is fourth. There he goes. Definitely on for a, a season best day. You'd hope you hope he can see it out at this stage. I think. Um, Cody Lawrence, though, he's got out of the DRS window. He hasn't yet. 0.9 seconds. So he's still within a second, William Neron is. And he's going to have to push to keep it, though, because it is going to be difficult, especially now that Cody Lawrence is in clean air and nobody to stop him. But he's doing fine here. But this is where William Neron is going to lose quite a bit of time, as we saw in the... In previous lap and there, yep there it goes 1.3 seconds so Cody Lawrence is gaining a lot of time in those those technical complex of corners at towards the end of this lap yeah it certainly is it's it's probably playing to his strengths you know really really good late on the break in really throwing that car in there using all the track but wow two seconds almost two seconds faster than that lap oh and Cody and Lawrence Andy Cody, Andy Cody has gone off here as Robert Walker moves up a position. I was worried the track was getting too easy then, so I'm kind of, kind of glad we saw that. Marco Johnson goes fastest. Mark Levine then goes fastest. Mark, These two Mark, have pitted. Mark Levine is on the soft tires. Yes, yeah, so he's, he's going for an interesting strategy call today. I can't imagine seeing these to the end. We've got Fox in the pit now and uh, Raquel Figo. So, more pit stops happening, Adam. We're getting to that, we're getting to that time. What, what, what calls will people make? Mark Levine going very... Um, it's almost similar to what he had to do last week at Hocken Nine, where he just, he just kept throwing softs on it and just banging in lap after lap of um, qualifying pace. I guess he's only decided to do the same today. Let's see if it pays off for him. Five DNFs in this one. Vasquez, Tyler Sines, Angela Backmarker, and Tom Cruise all calling an end to their night. Backmarker at one point was leading this race until an accident sent him off and put Marco Jansen up into the lead. And then Marco Jansen went off earlier as well on lap seven. And William Neron had the lead and now Cody Lawrence back in front and is our he's not he's he's a repeat leader in this one but he is that he will be the fifth lead change of this race yeah he's uh, reclaimed his throne after getting entangled in instant on the first lap but like i said it's been, it's been a that's, that's summed up the early part of the race a lot of incidents a lot of people swapping swapping the lead because of because of incidents 
And five DNFs, that's probably one of the highest of the season. Could have been a lot more as well. There's been a lot of a lot of carnage so far. Somebody I should point out now in a podium position is legs, but he's guess who's being chased down by Marco Jansen and Mark Levine, all on fresher tires. Uh, legs has not made his pit stop yet, but he is on the C2, so he's on the hards. So if he can actually outlast the soft tire on the second stick from Mark Levine, Legs is going to set himself up nicely here for his first pit stop. Yeah, he needs to try and hold these two off so he um, don't give him a chance to get a bit of a, a gap before he does decide to pit. But he's certainly, certainly this battle is going to play out towards the end. I think, like I said, Jansen... Mark Levine, are they going to pit again? Legs is probably going to only pit once at this stage. It's working lap, lap 15 at the moment. 14 laps to go. I want to probably get to about, what, 10, 10 to 12 to go on these hards, and then you can pit, and the medium should make it. Well, uh, I would say people are trying to get to the soft tires at this point as Marco Jansen side by side with Legs here. As they go down the hill, Legs on the inside. And Legs trying to hold on to this position. And now he's on the outside line, does not have the optimal line. And there goes Marco Jansen. Now Mark Levine coming into the picture here. Both DRS, and there goes Legs. He tried to correct himself with the DRS open, and he slides through. And there goes Mark Levine as well, does a full 360. And he makes it through. <laughs> oh, wow. My. That was you could see it if you were paying attention and you were looking in this general area. Uh, you would have saw Mark Levine doing a full 360 spin, getting back on track and going. Bit of a Mario Kart moment there. <laughs> so that's what's. So Marco Jansen now is P3. After uh, all the carnage, he got through there. Well, he got the pass done, but it was the battle with Legs and Mark Levine that set that one up. And um, William Neron into the pit lane now. He's putting on a new set of tires. You could definitely see the softs coming out here now as we are approaching that point. You'd think so. Mar uh, William Neron on the C three, three C threes. So I believe he'll probably try and take these to the end. Whether he can or not, we'll find out. As uh, Raquel's Figo sets the fastest lap, we're still waiting on Cody Lawrence to pit though. Yes, Cody Lawrence still has yet to pit, but he has almost a 20-second lead. And with this being a fantasy track, um, it makes it incredibly difficult to determine how long those pit stops are unless you've done practice laps, and we were not given that information. But Jansen, if he can close that gap just a little bit, he can take the lead of this race before Cody Lawrence pits. And yeah, uh, the gap is coming down quite significantly, almost a second since we even started talking. It certainly is. Uh, Cody Lawrence is probably, like I said, trying to stretch it now so he can just put the softs on and, and one stop with them. Um, also, I just noticed the Lorik is DNF, so we now have only 12 cars running. Oh, legs and Fox battling each other here. Fox into fifth place once again. And looks like Legs is going into the pit lane. Probably the best time. Same with Mark Levine. Yeah, I guess he's going to put more softs on. Or oh, maybe he's going to go. He's gone to the C2 by looks for actually. He's got, he's got some very weird strategy calls here on the tyres, Mark Levine. I don't, know, I don't know what he's thinking with the, the soft call in the middle there. Yeah, very interesting, because if I was him, I would just, at this point, you're going to have to go. He's on the hard tire again, which 
at this point, you should have just gone to the medium because the medium would have last. But it's his decision, and he decided to make it as Cody Lawrence staying far clear of this of the carnage behind him that's happening. But it's going to be a real question on who is going to bite first here. Cody Lawrence. He needs the pit still. He's 16 lap old hard tires. And you can see they're starting to affect him a little bit because I think at this point he is going to be passed by Marco Jansen. Um, and the gap has come down. Even through the final corner, Jansen is really yep. doing a nice job keeping pace. He certainly is. And I wouldn't really near a 129. I wouldn't. But, you know, he's, I think Jansen and Nero could both get. Cody Lawrence when he decides to pit if, if this pace continues and Cody stays out for a bit longer. So the race isn't over. Cody Lawrence is probably going to have to make two passing moves once once he gets back out. If there's time. I mean... Well, that's, that's another thing, yeah. I mean, how far is he going to come out behind? You know, as much as pace is, you know, Jans Marco Johnson and William Nero are certainly hustling the car around this circuit. If we, if we go based on normal F1 pit stop times, especially through this season that we've seen. It takes about 25 to 26 seconds. So, I would give Jansen and William Neron close to a seven second gap to Cody Lawrence. In a best case scenario, definitely. I think, I think if you can get seven to ten seconds ahead, with how many laps we'll have left at that point, you know they could definitely hold on or potentially hold on. But it's only going to get a bomb burner finish either way. Cody Lawrence has decided to pit now. Uh, this is it, the moment of truth right now. Yeah, it is the moment of truth. We're going to keep our eyes on because here they come. Already th into the front straight they come, and Marco Jansen is going to be the leader here. And Cody Lawrence still not out of the pits. This is go time now for these two. It certainly is. They need to make sure they're not fighting with each other and letting Cody get back in. But Cody Lawrence, 10 seconds behind. That's exactly what you needed right there if you're Marco Jansen and William Neron. But you know he's going to be coming on those soft tires and you're on the medium tires that are starting to wear a little bit harder now. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what it's going to come down to. Can the, can Marco Jansen's and William Nero's tyres hold on to the end here? I mean, they, they'll be praying themselves in the car. Cody Can Lawrence Nero's is on the, the C2s. C3s, excuse me. He's on C3. the medium tyre as well. He didn't go softs either. That okay. just might have just played into Marco Jansen's hands. Possibly. Also, maybe he didn't think the, the softs were going to last 10 laps. You know, Cody likes a pretty, pretty wide strategist at times. So he knows what he's doing. But William Neron's got the fresher of the two tyres in terms of the Marco Johnson william Neron battle, and they need to uh, sort that out because Cody Lawrence sets a purple middle sector. And he's already gained two seconds on his outlap. So he's going to be right on the back of these two very soon, I would imagine. Well, here comes well, Jansen. He's into the pit lane, so he is going to give up track position here. And he's actually going to lose two positions out of this, maybe three. Yeah, three positions before this is done. Maybe even four because here comes Mark Levine into the picture. It's going to be close with Mark Levine here. Let's see what happens when we get around yep, this corner. Yep, Mark Levine already through. So, Jan, I, he, I guess... I guess his tyres weren't going to last to the end and he, he made the call to pit now so he has time to use the fresh rubber try and gain as many positions as possible. Well, William Neron has done four laps since his uh, pit stop and putting on the medium tyres. So, I mean, there's an, a little bit of difference in wear, but not, I would say, not a whole lot between Cody Lawrence and William Neron in terms of what their wear is going to be by the end of this race as we are now nine laps to the end. And this is William Neron's. This is going to be his best chance to win at this point. He cannot pit. If he wants to win this, he can't pit. 
Yep, uh, he's certainly in a in a good position to to win from this from this point on. And like I said, he needs he's just gonna have to stay out now. That's his only choice. If he pits, he's just gonna go back into fifth or sixth behind Marco Jansen, which will help nothing. Like I say, he's gonna be on for a crit or well, season best finish today. If he does finish in the top four, someone's just gone off. I don't know who that is. That is a back marker. of Andy Cody. Cody Lawrence oh. just set the fastest lap time. Fox is now into the pits. He's going to give up track position uh, with just a handful of laps to go. And here comes Figo around the inside of Marco Jansen, but they're still side by side. Oh, Figo gets a little bit out of shape on the exit of turn one, and Marco will be glad to take that position back. Yeah, it's not only the best of it with these new tyres. Thought he'd be pulling away from like Raquel Figo's Figo, but there they are battling. Like so Figo got massive wide out of the first turn. It undid his work of getting around uh, Marco Jansen, but they go again around round as the head heading around the lap. Well now we have a three car battle here. This is for the sixth spot. Legs, Mark Anthony Hinkson and uh, Kieran Fox. And this is going to get interesting because Karen Fox now on the medium tires as well. I'm very surprised by these late pit stoppers that they're not going for the softs. Oh, and Andy Cody almost getting into the side of Fox. That was incredibly close. Still getting it. <laughs> it's been one of those nights, Adam. That would just be another, another page to the story. But these three battling away, it was, it's similar to what was happening at Arkenheim last week. We had a great battle throughout the field, including these three drivers here for many laps. So they're continuing that battle here at Pinwheel. Mark Levine's settled into his own little race, P2, P3 at the moment. Well, that's going to be the highest deal finish at this stage, without a mistake from Larry William there on old Cody Lawrence. Well, William okay. Neron, right now, all he has is a hope and a prayer. That's all he has. Yeah, he really does. Yeah, he's just, just got to keep putting those laps in, hitting, hitting every, everything correctly, and just hope he can somehow hold off Cody Lawrence. But it does feel like a bit of a, a monumental task. Especially the amount of time Cody Lawrence is gaining. He's 2.8 seconds back of William Neron, and that's been in three laps. Yeah, it, it's it's relentless. That is Cody Lawrence. He is just relentless. Who knows? You know, once you get once you get close and start battling, things can happen. He could he could make a mistake. And that's what William Neron needs. He needs Cody Lawrence to uh, probably make a mistake to uh, give him that breathing room that he needs. Box low, he's uh, looking at the back of legs. It's uh, Mark Anthony Inks is uh, also in this battle. These three have been going out for a few laps now. Probably over six. Well, every point matters still. As we enter this race, we'll have three races remaining. And we are taking a break next week. I think next week is a break week. And we head to the Coda. And then SEMA, what is that? Some of these tracks I may not even recognize. We'll head to uh, uh, Circuit of the Americas here on April 19th. Some Samanji Interchange Street Circuit. As Fox now making the move happen and he's up in the fifth place. And our final round will happen at Circuit de Barcelona, Catalunya. Or Catalunya. Um, I can't think of a more horrendous venue for a final race in anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, if that happened in real life, it would be like, the worst thing ever. It would be a riot. There would be riots everywhere. Yeah. Especially if it was the, the dinky chicane layout. I'm so glad they're dropping that this year. Yes, Going they back are. to the original layout.
They're back. To no chicane in Barcelona for this year. So that was like Heike Kovalainen's is only um, thing that he added to F1. Oh. Crash, crashing in that corner <laughs> that made him pull that stupid chicane in. Here's Heike. Well, Cody Lawrence is now caught up to William Neron. Has the DRS, but I don't think the move is going to happen just yet. He doesn't need to uh, overthink this. No, he does not. Take his time. He's got. He's got. Play, he's got five laps. He's got five laps, and he's got the pace. And William Neron needs a very wide car now. This also is wide. It would be as if it was a. JT BMW. Okay. Five laps to go. We are approaching the end here on this one, and and Cody Lawrence looking at taking his seventh win of the season. William Neron trying to find his first win in two seasons right here at ACF1 and there goes Cody Lawrence right by him very Ooh, easy another, almost contact between the two was, yeah I thought they were <laughs> going to collide but they don't and you know anything could happen but I think we Nero will be waiting for a bit longer to get that first win but, you know, maybe I'm going to try and commentate his curse, Cody Lawrence. I don't think it's going to work, but Cody Lawrence is, is certainly going to win now, Adam. Certainly nothing could ever go wrong. C certainly nothing could ever well, go Nothing wrong. goes wrong at Pinwheel. It's been a very, <laughs> very, very pedestrian race. Nothing crazy's happened. Raquel's Figo is uh, set the fastest lap. And by the way, if you're watching this, you can always watch the, the replay app. If you're just joining us, you can watch uh, the full race replay over on YouTube at Apollo Racing Club on YouTube. Um, and you can watch not only this race, but all the previous races that have happened here at Apollo Racing Club in the last few weeks. Of course, catch up on the entire season of ACF1. Um, of course, last night's race at Texas Motor Speedway in our NASCAR Truck Series. Andrew Sirwick right. picking up back-to-back -back wins last night, so... Oh, don't, don't put spoilers out, Adam, because I was about to say you, got, you should go watch that race. It was highly entertaining. <laughs> it was actually really good. It was a very good race. But here in ACF1, the leader, Cody Lawrence, 2.2 seconds ahead. Six lead changes so far tonight, and we are now three laps from the end. That's from the end indeed, Adam. And uh, it was, certainly felt like seven races in one with some of the incidents that are going on earlier on tonight. But Cody Lawrence charging away. Mark Levine seems to have accepted he's probably going to finish third at this stage. William Neron, best, even though he has, he's probably not going to get the win, he's, he's still picking up his best finish of the season if he stays P2. So we should be very happy with that. Figo getting by Mark Anthony Hinkson now after turn one, and he'll move up into seventh. Fox in fifth place, legs in sixth place right now. And for Fox, after the opening lap, that he's going to be, I think he'll be happy after this, after this opening lap. Yeah, I mean, he's P5. He's had, he's had a few incidents tonight, so, but he's obviously not the only one. So, yeah, I think, I think recovering back to P5, we're very happy for him. Nearly everyone's going to score a point tonight. It's like I said at the start, it's been it's been a race of survival. I mean, we've got six DNFs so far, seven DNFs tonight. You know, it's been been a, certainly been a race of attrition. Carlos Figo though, he's looking at the back of legs. Can he get this move done? Get up into P6. He had the pace. He set the fastest lap the lap before. So he might be looking for a move down this front straight. With the DRS and getting closer to that stage, just needs to keep tight in this uh, little twisty technical section. Takes a very tight line compared to legs. Nearly, nearly collided out the at the uh, exit there. Vigo now is going to get the DRS. Will he get a run down the inside or on the outside of um, legs here into turn one? Still a lot of moves here. A lot of moves have been done before the corner. In fact, there we are. The move is done. 
before they reach the apex. So Raquel Figo is up into P6. He's looking to try and tree stand Fox now. Two laps to go. Three seconds to make up. But he's, he's certainly going at a great clip at the moment. So maybe he can get a move on that final lap if he uh, keeps it up. And still, still, like I said, all the points matter. And he wants a few extra points tonight if he can trace down Fox. Two laps now remaining as Figo moves up into six. Looking at William Nair on here, still in P2. There we Not go. The fine P3. Well, we have the All white right. flag now waving. As Cody Lawrence can relax now, he can breathe and not have to worry about the threats behind him as he has a six and a half second lead over William Neron. But for William Neron, this will be a season high finish for him, um, which is good. It's nice to see guys improve um, each week and try and try and get up there towards the front and but it just seems like nobody is challenging Cody Lawrence this season at all. Certainly not, but like I said, William Nair on P2, while everyone else was losing their head, he kept his, and he certainly profited tonight. But Cody Lawrence, well, like I say, it's just relentless and doesn't really make mistakes, and, you know, it's just so difficult mentally for everyone else to try and compete with that on a week-to-week -week basis. You know, you have people who can like match you on pace, but they just cannot keep it up for a whole race distance usually. They only really mark Levine being able to best him on track this season. But Cody Lawrence now working his way through the final corner onto the main straight. He's going to be our winner at Pinwheel. And what a race it's been. So, so much action early on, many, many spins, many crashes. But Cody Lawrence is our race winner again. He can't win the title tonight, but he's pretty much got his hands on it right now. We have William Neron coming over the line, P2. Like I said, season best finish for him. Great result. Mark Levine fights his way back to P3. And now we're just waiting for Marco Jansen to cross the line, P4. Fox looks like he's managed to hold off. Um, Raquel Svigo is really charging those last few laps. So Fox finishes P5, Raquel Figo P6, Legs P7, Mark Anthony Inkson, he'll probably be disappointed, but he's going to come in P9, he got caught up in an incident at the start. P8. And we're just, P8, sorry, and uh, Matt Chevry is going to finish this out, he's, he's a bit behind though, so, might wait in a little while. Andy Cody's going to be the only one without a point tonight, he got lapped, and uh, he's going to be classified P11. Matt Chevry now rounds, rounds the final lots of the corner, who knows is that these games but he's over the line now and that is it that is it but the race winner tonight Cody Lawrence for a seventh time this season and bringing that championship closer to him now he has one hand on it and he will head into next week with hopes held high and he can continue this run of form from him. But he's got to come back next week or in two weeks in Coda and really put on a show if he wants to claim the title before the end of this season. He certainly, certainly will have to put on a show at Coda, but it's certainly a man who's been putting on a show most weeks, so you won't put it past him. Pretty much nibbling the trophy at this point, Adam. Oh. Well, what a. Well, this is like I said, there's a lot to unpack with that race. So many incidents early on. Really set the, set the uh, tone for a few drivers' races. But it also gave some, some drivers probably to finish higher than they probably thought they would mm -hmm. based on qualifying and practice, so. Well done to everyone who finished here tonight. Well, we started the race under full course yellow. We ended it 
with a, a nine second gap with Cody Lawrence winning here tonight. So our podium, Cody Lawrence, William Neron, and Mark Levine. Well, we will be off next week. Of course, next Tuesday night, join us for the uh, ARC NASCAR Truck Series. We head to Charlotte Motor Speedway, so that will be a great race next week. No ACF1 next Wednesday night. Um, this upcoming Saturday, of course, ACC GT3 action with Matt McAdams on the call on that one. So join us on Saturday night as well at 9 o'clock Eastern to watch all the action. James, final thoughts. Rush race is also into Cody Lawrence. He um, had that incident early, managed to work his way back through the field and stomp away and take a commanding victory again. Also, like I said, William Near on the season high finish. He kept he kept it pointing in the right direction while so many people didn't happen. It didn't happen for a lot of people. Pinwheel certainly proved a challenge tonight and we had a certainly a very um, high attrition race. So what a great show. Indeed. Well, thank you, James, as always, for your help tonight. And, of course, thank you for all watching here on Twitch and over on YouTube. Make sure you hit the follow button, hit the like, um, hit the subscribe button on YouTube. And, of course, join us on Discord um, for our weekly racing here at Apollo Racing Club. For everybody here at Apollo Racing Club, we want to thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in two weeks at CODA. Good night. <laughs>